Hello, friends. Welcome to our What is Hyper Automation presentation. I'm Brian French with Salient Process, and I'll be your hyper automation guide today. This is part one in a multi part series on hyper automation. The other areas we plan on covering are listed here. We'll publish them as they become available. All of the items in the series will have both a blog and a recorded presentation so you can consume the content in the methods you prefer. This is Gartner's definition for hyperautomation. The thing to take away from this definition are the bolded words. Hyperautomation is business-driven, disciplined, and involves the orchestrated use of multiple technologies. You will see the importance of these bolded words as we dive deeper into what hyperautomation is. First, Let's look at Gartner's hyperautomation loop. This is their depiction of the infinite loop companies need to perform to get the most out of automation. We're going to create our own version of this and walk you step by step through the concept of hyperautomation. Not to pat ourselves on the back, but we believe our version is better. We think you'll agree. This is Salient's version of the hyperautomation infinite loop, which describes the core areas of hyperautomation and how you can get there. During the presentation, we'll cover every aspect of this loop. The first step is to define your business objectives. What are you after? What needs to change? Are you trying to chase growth and thus revenue needs to increase? Are you trying to boost profitability? Do your costs need to go down? Is compliance a big driver for your company? When you start with the business objective, this will drive what your digital ambition ends up being. This makes sure you don't lose the forest for the trees. It is always about the business objectives you are trying to achieve. Technologies and methodologies are just there to help. They are not the end game. Now that you have your business objectives, you can start to explore what you need to do with your programs and processes. Much of the improvements and changes will be automation, given the fact so many jobs have substantial pieces of them that can be automated. According to work market, 53% of employees believe they could save up to 20 hours per month by automating tasks. I suspect that's low. However, you should take a more comprehensive view than just automation. To widen your perspective, you may decide to employ approaches like design thinking or game theory to take your company through what-if scenarios. Your vision may end up being to completely tear down what you have and automate everywhere you can, or to iteratively improve on what you have by automating portions of it. Now that you have objectives and a vision, the hard detailed work begins. You need to do process analysis to see how you can make your process outcomes align with your business objectives. Fortunately, this work is not as hard as it used to be. Data mining and automated process discovery tools have come a long way. However, don't let the smooth taste fool you. You're still going to need subject matter experts working with process analysts to take your models the last mile. Automated process mining and discovery tools have inherent limitations that still require human intervention and analysis to give you the necessary insights to design your processes so they align with your digital ambitions. In particular, when these tools are embedded in an RPA solution, they tend to be very focused on automating via bots which is just one small piece of the puzzle. I mean, if you have a hammer, everything looks like a nail, right? Also, this is where you will want to simulate scenarios to see what happens as you make changes to your processes. What happens if instead of manually sorting through invoices, I have a document ingestion engine doing that? What happens if I have bots take over certain rote and mundane work? You can use Salient's DBA SIM tool to help with this analysis. You can go to our website at salientprocess.com for more information. This leads us to the automation alignment matrix, which is a matrix salient process created to fit the type of work being done with the most appropriate automation technology. The matrix was created because our customers were struggling to determine which automation tool to use given their situation. The tools Gardner lists as being part of what they call the digital ops toolbox make up what our matrix aligns with. Automation alignment is a very crucial step that makes sure you avoid the I have a hammer so everything looks like a nail problem. 
We will cover the automation alignment matrix in another presentation in this series. For the purposes of this presentation, it is a vital step you need to take to make sure you're using the right automation tool at the right time and the right place in your processes. One could argue it belongs in the process analysis step. However, we felt it was important enough to give it its own step. You've now done some excellent groundwork to make sure what you build is aligned with your objectives. Now we get into the part everyone has been doing a lot of already, at least concerning RPA and deploying bots, and that is prototyping or building minimum viable products to determine fit quickly. We won't spend a lot of time here, as this is well appreciated and practiced throughout the industry. And the same with being able to deliver and go to production, at least for initial deployments. Where there are challenges are with scaling beyond prototypes, pilots, and limited production deployments. We'll get deeper into that later, as well as in future presentations in this series. Now, this next piece is very critical. Well, the truth is, all the steps are key. However, monitoring and measurement are essential to being able to establish scale and grow your hyper-automation efforts. I like to think of monitoring and measurement as being a bit like having Google Maps or Waze on your phone. The app is beneficial to help you get where you want to go. However, it is much less helpful if it does not know where you are right now. It can't possibly give you directions if it doesn't have that context. Also, where you've been is very helpful for the map software in predicting where you may want to go. In the case of your automation landscape, none of that is possible without analytics. However, it isn't good enough to have analytics for the business data collected as your business processes execute. To truly map and track where you want to go and accurately know if you are getting there, you also need to be able to measure your program's performance. And you want to be able to predict what will happen based on what has happened. Essentially, all of this data has to report and forecast if your process outcomes will help or hinder you from achieving your business objectives defined in step one. Remember, your business objectives are all that matter. You have to hit those targets. It doesn't matter if your process is running more efficiently if the end outcome isn't helping you reach those business objectives. What if your cycle time is much better, but you are running into regulatory issues? Is that helping you if your business objective is to lower risk? If you aren't getting the proper process outcomes, you'll need to figure out how to change your processes to achieve the desired result. With all of this, as you start to see initial success, you'll need to be able to govern and scale your program. What is both interesting and challenging now is you have many disciplines necessary for the breadth of tools available in the digital ops toolbox, as well as less technical but no less critical disciplines such as process analysis. Your methodologies and COEs will have to take all of this into account. It is Salient's belief you need an automation COE which will encompass multiple COEs specific to the disciplines necessary for the various digital ops capabilities, as well as for process analysis. Trying to scale without this in place will create duplicate efforts, fiefdoms, and chaos. In other words, you may be automating, but your approach will be highly inefficient across your company, and thus you will fall behind competitors who are successfully hitting their business objectives. This is a vast subject and will be covered in one or more of the later presentations in this series. The iterate and optimize step is vital and is integral to the fact we have now built an infinity symbol to represent our model for iterative, business-driven hyperautomation. Through the course of my career in process improvement, which started back in 2005 at Intel, people have always asked me, when do we stop improving the process? What they're really asking is, when can they stop spending money on process improvement? My answer then was the same as it is today, even with all of the advances in technology. The answer is, when you decide your process is so good, you don't need to worry about the competition anymore, then you could stop improving it. So the question you need to ask yourself is, are you that good? You could even expand the question to, is anyone that good? It isn't very likely given the churn in the Fortune 500. As of 2019, only 10.4% of Fortune 500 companies from 1955 are still on that coveted list. On the other hand, basing this decision strictly on competition is an oversimplification. 
there is also the consideration of business objectives. Those objectives, as well as the reality of non-infinite resources, will dictate there are only certain processes you can commit to continually improving. However, hyperautomation is depicted as an infinite loop for a reason. There will be certain core processes at your company that must always be improved in order to stay competitive. Now that we have our hyperautomation infinite loop built out, let's talk about successes and challenges. What we've seen frequently in the automation space is initial successes with RPA implementations. Everyone gets excited about the initial success, but then gets bogged down in how to scale and grow to hyperautomation. The keys to success are only partially the right or the higher expertise side of the infinite loop. The more significant drivers for success, once you get beyond the initial low-hanging fruit, is the left two-thirds or the low expertise side of the hyperautomation loop. Steps 1 through 4 and 7 through 9 are where the disciplined iterative portion of the infinite loop comes in. These steps are where the heavy lifting is. They are the discipline part of hyperautomation. However, they also have the most significant payback for your efforts. The best way to distance yourself from your competition is if you are tying process outcomes to business objectives and adjusting based on those outcomes. To achieve this, you need to take a holistic approach to automation and not just focus on the right one-third of the hyperautomation infinite loop. In summary, hyperautomation is a business-driven, iterative, and disciplined approach to automation that allows you to accelerate your automation efforts and results. You cannot achieve hyperautomation with RPA alone. The Digital Ops Toolbox is key to being able to have the necessary tools to scale. While automation efforts are usually successful in the initial pilot and small departmental deployments, companies struggle with scaling beyond those initial successes. To get to hyperautomation requires a more rigorous, business-driven approach of defining your business objectives up front and letting those drive the digital decisions you make as you grow your automation program. As we mentioned at the start of this presentation, this is the first in a series. We'll follow this with presentations about how you can scale beyond RPA to reach hyperautomation, leveraging IBM Digital Business Automation to do hyperautomation, how you can align the right automation tools with the right type of work, and discuss the strategies that will allow you to navigate the hyperautomation roadmap. Thank you very much for taking time out of your busy schedule to view this presentation. We greatly appreciate it. I'm Brian French with Salient Process. We help you give yourself the freedom to be great.